Hello, this is George Hayes and welcome to the third tutorial in the OpenGL 3.3 Plus tutorial series and in this tutorial we're going to be covering implementing textures and if you start off with what we had in the last tutorial we're going to go ahead and jump into the mesh text uh, files and we'll show you what changes we've added in there we've added in another vector of GLM uh, VEC2 for or called UVs and it's going to cover that X and Y or S and T or UV coordinates for the texture and just so you know there was there and then what we did is we've added in the line up here to bring in the two additional UVs into this down here now as you can see this creates a vector a GLM vector 2 and put passes in X and Y for each of those as it runs through the series and those are actually grabbed from where we pass this in to here through UV data here alright now that's an additional change as far as in that line up here we added in the pointer to the UV right there alright so basically you got this line here is added in, this line up here is added in, and this one down here is added in. And you're going to do basically the same thing later when we add normals in as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump on in here and look at the additional changes. Where we had the vertex buffer up here before as far as initializing it, now we also initialize the, the UV buffer as far as here. It's pretty much identical to initializing the vertex buffer. The difference is is we're now initializing it as number two, all right, which you'll find back up here. This is an additional change what we've done. In the previous one, this was like this, and now initialized it. So it has become number one, where this was zero, and this was one, and this was two before. It's now zero, one, two, three. Okay. So what we've done from that is we also passed in the UV uh, vertex array data and size of it and so forth. And here's an actual pointer to the very beginning of that data and this here is the size of the data and you're getting the size of the length times the size of the individual component as far as in there All right. so then of course just like above we're sitting there going to go through as far as enabling the buffer and then sit there and telling it how the spacing of everything is done as far as in it All right. and draw is identical and delete as far as getting rid of clearing up the data on this as far as when this thing terminates is identical and doesn't change All right. now as far as for shaders there is a minor change as far as in the shader we're going to add this line here into it and it is simply going to point to the shader to provide this coordinate system this name as a coordinate or sorry uh, pointer to the data passed into it from your new vertex buffer here and since we're looking at this this is we actually remember this is actually number one now and this is zero so this one pertains to the one here which will end up being able to grab as far as into vertex buffer and I'll and the sh sh sorry the shader vertex buffer mode so let's see if I can jump over to it here we go alright in our vertex buffer we have layout for texture coordinates is here alright as you can see and we're also using layout now in, instead of the attrib attribute system uh, because this is actually technically for older versions of it an old format so 3.3 and above you really should be using this uh, we're going to put that out vector of the UV so we're going to pass this texture coordinate to this and we do that down here and then later on we when we have uniforms it will be passed in like 
through this here and as you can see right now it's you know blocked out commented out sorry okay and while I could go through all this right now we'll go back to it in a few minutes and that way well I'll tell you what we'll go ahead and jump on in it right now alright so as far as with the shader we're now receiving the UV as an input and we're going to use out for vector 4 for color and we have a uniform sampler a uniform variable doesn't change throughout the entire mesh as it's being done alright so this imp this out color is you know as far as dealing with this this in is actually coming from the out here on this UV alright and the sampler basically takes a position as far as to grab the data from the texture coordinate and we put it in here as far as for which one and then we sit there can sit there and grab the UV coordinate of that sampler alright RGB it add it and add it and that gives us the 3D um, with the texture to sorry with the 2D texture here alright it gives us through the coordinates and we're passing that in as far as into vector 4 alright so we have the RGB plus 1 it creates a vector 4 of color alright and that would be like having your alpha onto it so then we're just outputting that and that's going on as far as to be your color that's output from the texture alright now close that back down this down alright so we've now added in the texture coordinate as far as on there and you probably want to see how we're grabbing the texture and we're going to use SDL to grab the texture and create a class for it uh, texture dot h up here and io stream string sdl dot h sdl image for grab using the sdl to grab in the thing and of course glue all right this is your basic texture class um, we're gonna actually load the texture in after we've created it all right and that will be through here and if we go and actually look at the we have an SDL surface that is where we're going to load the data actually into and then we have a GL unit for M texture which is going to be the name of the texture for uh, the OpenGL all right and this is actually where we're grabbing it from SDL and actually look at the code on that all right so when we create texture through this way all it's really doing is passing it down and grabbing it through this all right so we're going to initialize right here that's all this is doing is initializing the image part for SDL and we're coming down and we're using image load to load the texture excuse me data in by passing it the C string of the texture name which we got from obviously up here all right and a little bit of error checking tells us if it failed or not all right then we need to sit there and get the format of what the SDL image is and convert it to uh, OpenGL format all right because it doesn't put out as far as the, what they're exactly the same as all we're doing is identifying whether or not like in this case SDL pixel format RGB 24 equals the GL RGB alright or we have SDL pixel format BGR 24 equals GL BGR then of course as far as you have the SDL pixel format ABGR 8888 actually equals the GL RGB A -A -A. and so if it's one of these it associates with the correct one so that we have the format and if it's not one of those I've given you the SDL outputs for so you can match it up and create your own case in case you aren't aren't using one of the fairly standard ones here all right so down here we actually create the texture all right we're telling it one texture we're passing a pointer as far as into it and you could actually pass the pointer to array and have it create several of them all right so gl bind texture then sister binds that texture as far as on the 
and telling it that it's two, an actual 2D texture. All right, you can bind it as a 1D or a 3D, but once you've done this, you can only use it that texture as whatever you did the first time. All right, so at this point here, we're going to tell it it's a 2D texture, and we're filling in some of the parameters on it. SRAP tells us whether or not it's gone past the X, right? So if it does, we're going to repeat the T wrap here is whether or not it's exceeded the Y coordinate and we're going to tell it just to repeat if it does. Okay. So in the next one here we're filling in another set of textures of um, parameters and minimum means as far as if it's if they're having to reduce the image then there's going to geolinear interpolate what they need and as far as for the next one where magnify it means if they have to magnify it then again GL linear interpolate and I've put the links over the top of these so if you want to look at all the other options that can be available there it's there to look at uh, this here actually creates the image and stores it as far as in your hardware all right now we're telling it's a 2d texture is starting off here as zero level alright this is what you'd be using as bitmap zero is the default so if you have multiple image and you're going different levels alright internal format of what you're creating is a GL RGBA as you've seen above we want to know what we're converting from so that's gonna come in back here you have the width and the height zero is whether or not you want a border in here of one pixel or not this is old leave it at zero nobody uses it anymore all right it's just antiquated garbage uh, we're telling the format of the data we're passing in is in bytes and we're passing a pointer to that information out of the texture or actual surface we created from using SDL uh, all right so then we do our cleanup getting rid of the SDL free surface and delete texture when we hit the class exits and when we go to actually use it we're going to call this bind function here all right which is going to use gl texture zero in this case but if we wanted we could actually pass in a value from zero to 31 and then add it to this and we could use whatever up to the 31 textures that can be done as far as on it all right and then you sit there you as far as actually use the texture this way as far as using bind texture all right so this activates the texture and binds it all right and how we actually put all that together and make it run we come in here and we create the texture as far as on here we've pat you know access the texture up here all right as far as the class you know, included it all right then we go over to initialize we've now got that additional UV data that we passed in earlier alright but the texture we're gonna also sit there and load the texture here alright now if we wanted I guess we you know, could have done as far as on when we created it we could have passed it in as far as on that but I prefer to do initialization actually separate from it myself you know, it depends on how you're intending to use something. All right. So here's, uh, in this case, we're passing in grass. All right. Which we'll run it. It's a real cheesy grass texture. So <laughs> anyway, then we're going to sit there as far as on render. When we want to render and put the texture in, we're going to use the texture that we created and simply bind and then you have your T shader and triangle and so forth like that. So now the importance of this as far as since we're using a shader, um, an indexed buffer object, I want to go over to this. All right, for every vertice that you have as far as in your system, you have to have a UV because you only have one index for it. So for example, if this is our mesh right here and 
we have these four coordinates right which would be one two three four we would need four UV coordinates now whether we want to go zero one two three and match it up as far as for that so that we end up with a triangle looking like this then we'd have zero one two three and we get this output but you could go and let's say you want just a red border around what you're doing you could go zero one two one and there's zero one two one and it would basically copy this side back over and you'd end up with a solid red going around all right so you could use different coordinates as far as from your textures to create it but whatever you do you still have to have the same number of UV as you have as far as your vertices so you have to have a matching pair and when you have normals added in you have to have a matching set for each UV so this, why does this become important well let's see if I can pull something up real quick on it that will help us out looking at this alright let's go to what will be a later one of these and and I have a ship object in here I think it will fill out pretty good what I'm trying to point out I'll edit notepad plus plus alright this ship object has a whole bunch of verte vertices as far as in here and coming down all right and then it's got its UV coordinates as far as the VT there all right and the normals are listed but if you go through and you count these they're not the same amount of each of them and the way that that um, Blender deals with that is Blender allows you to reuse things over and over again and it has essentially three different um, indices all right and in this case this first uh, value you see here before the slash is your vertex then your UV then your normal vertex UV normal so they got three sets of indices we don't have that in OpenGL so when you get something like this in it has to be converted over to where it's created the unique indices for each one of those specific things that you're trying to sit there create a coordinate for or vertex all right all right so we're back to this so now obviously we could sit there and change the texture as far as on that let's see go back right here I'm trying to remember the name of the texture sorry and my other texture name is let's see we got grass zero two and DTPNG. All right, so we created it here. We initialize it and we go up here and turn this into DT. Oops, sorry, I didn't compile. Stupid mistake on my part. Okay, so it's another cheesy texture, you know, something where I was trying out different coordinates off of the system for something else. Anyway, uh, as you can see, it loads up. This is, it was these two different textures that uh, showed me that there's, I needed to go through and actually add in all the stuff to uh, identify the different texture types so that, and make use of the, this system here as far as on it because originally I just had grass texture in when I went to load up the other one it didn't bother to load so I had a, it just it actually loaded it came out looking really funky so <laughs> anyway that's why this is in here and if you happen to run into a different texture format and you need the information I figured I'd go ahead and type this in and save people time so anyway uh, now Again, we've already covered the render and everything, so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, find it useful, and I'll try to have another one up soon. All right, and the next one should be covering uh, adding in the normals, and let's see. Then we'll probably actually go from that to where I'm actually loading an object from uh, 
like the one you see with the ship and then we'll probably go to adding lighting in as far as on it. Alright, well thank you very much again for listening and hope you found it useful.